Hello everyone, welcome to the Teaching English webinar for teacher educators in which Phil Dexter will give us practical advice on how to help teachers who have learners with special educational needs. My name is Shirin Soyuz and I'll be your moderator today. Thank you all so much for joining this live event. This is the eighth session in our new series of monthly webinars uh, for teacher educators and you can register for the future sessions from our Teaching English website. Before we start the session, I'd like to share a number of quick housekeeping reminders with you. While waiting, please share with us in the Q&A where you are from. If you work in pre-service, type teacher education, um, type pre-service. If you work in in-service, type in-service in the Q&A. So this session is being recorded and a recording of the webinar will be available. It will be available on the Teaching English website in the next couple of days. The link to the certificate will be provided in the thank you email that you'll receive tomorrow. And finally, you will have a chance to ask questions during the session. Please use the Q&A to ask our presenters your questions. We'll be using the chat only for announcements. So let me introduce you to our guest today. So Phil Dexter worked for the British Council from 1978, 2019 as a teacher, trainer, project manager, and since 2011, he's worked as a specialist in the area of special educational needs and disability. In 2018, he was awarded an MBE for his work in supporting learners with special educational needs. Phil is now freelance and uh, continues to support governments in projects supporting quality, inclusive teaching and learning practices. And most recently on the Teaching for All project, uh, embedding inclusive education and teacher professional development in South Africa. Um, Phil, over to you to launch today's session. Welcome, everybody. I'm so pleased that so many have joined up, and I'm also so very pleased that um, that's already so many people have put actually actually questions. Um, let's see how many we can answer a little bit later. Um, just before we begin, I mean, this session clearly, as it says here, is about how. How teachers can 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 you know can be best supported um, on inclusive practices, um, and um, just just for a start, I'd like to thank you. all of this is based on the on the research booklet, which uh, um, I hope you may have had time to look at, and if not, it's it's available. It was in the invite. Um, I'd like I'd like to thank um, um, everyone at, at actually British Council and Sharon and, and Andrea and John, of course, for um, for for all the support in this. And of course, Alan Abovaris, um, who was very much my, my mentor in producing this booklet. Um, so um, what we can see here is really just a, a snapshot of what we're going to look at in the next hour. And so um, we'll just briefly look at what are the needs identified by teacher educators for this booklet. And of course, our focus is teacher educators um, and your support that you'll give to teachers. I'm sure there's a lot of teachers on, on this webinar as well, and that's Absolutely fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, it's important to kind of define our understanding of special educational needs, and we'll and we'll go through that. Uh, and looking at a, a, um, a concept which really is a medical model and social model thinking, which I think is really really important in understanding what we mean by inclusive practices. Um, and 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 really, um, a real main focus may as well give the punchline first is how, how we can really focus on positive approaches to inclusive practices, and we'll come to that. Um, um, at that point, we will have, uh, we'll, have a, we'll, we'll have a pause for the question and answer, and then we'll move on to a little bit more practical approaches um, um, around what I call the top 10 approaches, which was a key part of the booklet as well. Okay, if we could move on to the next slide. Okay, this is just to give you a little snapshot of uh, what uh, in, in the in the research that we did, that um, in terms of where teacher educators who responded are really, you know, they, um, and um, if you if you just like to look at this for a second or for for a few seconds, um, you know, it was asking questions like, all teachers are teachers of special educational needs. What do you think about that? Um, questions around differentiated learning, um, and and other questions around inclusive teaching and. I think you can see from this most most people responded have uh, are, are starting from a positive approach yeah, yeah. and and that's what I would expect from all of us who are, 
who are here. We want to do the best we can for our learners, what whatever their needs are. You know, the, you know, the, um, on the right hand side was a, more, a bit more general, really, in looking at concepts, just to see how much you understood. Um, and I'm not going to go into the details of this, but you can see, um, you know, issues like what we call intersectionality, which means how do how do different needs inter interlink and, and, and connect. Um, you know, looking at what we call equality and equity, um, individual differences, a concept like neurodiversity, which I'll touch on a little bit later, and then these issues around social model. And I, I, as as we can see, that the people responded, and this is what I'd expect as well from our our experience and knowledge that we have this positive approach. Again. Okay, next slide, please. Um, and this was just really based on a poll that, that was done um, by, I'm sure, um, those of you who are, who are attending. Um, and really, it's not just about um, how we make our learners confident, but what about your confidence? You know, and uh, interesting that, you know, that if you look at those figures, you know, a majority, certainly, um, you know, you feel confident that you, you, you can work in this area. Um, you would expect people to say, I don't know. Um, and uh, uh, because I think, I think that's positive as well. You know, you know, there's a lot that we don't know what we don't know as well. And uh, uh, it's through our experience in working with, in, 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 in this area that we'll come up with, with, with positive solutions. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, uh, again, um, in, in the initial research, we asked the question, you know, what are the specific special educational needs? And I, I'd call them special educational needs labels because, uh, uh, and I think in terms of, you know, this focuses on English language teaching and we would, or language teaching, and we'd expect um, thing, issues like uh, dyslexia to probably be pretty high on the list, really. Yeah, the, yeah. Um, 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 the, the, common, the common issues, like the autism spectrum or what we might call ADHD, social emotional behavior, um, um, you know, um, um, how we support learners who may, who may have sensory needs, so visual hearing and mobility. And of course, speech and language needs would be, would be, would be high up there. So um, these, these are, and gifted and talented is an area which is sometimes misunderstood. You know, it's, uh, you know, it's felt, oh, well, these people are really, uh, really intelligent and there's no problems. But often, actually, fitting, fitting those needs into a classroom can be a big issue, actually. And, and very, very often, because gifted and talented people don't get their uh, enrichment that they need, that they often underachieve, actually. Yeah, they, yeah. Um, so, um, yes, the, these, are, these are the labels. Now, it's important to understand, actually, that they're just you know, the, the more a teacher understands about all of these, the better informed and the better they'll be prepared to actually work with all learners. But they are, they are labels as well. And, you know, our, our learners are not, our labels are for bottles and for suitcases and things like that. You know, um, what we really need is, yes, understand all of this, but um, um, we need to understand our, you know, who, who our learners are and our individual needs of our learners, whatever those labels. You know. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, and again, in, as part of the research, because th this is what this, this webinar is based on, and, and on all the webinars we've been doing, is based on the how-to guides and the research. Um, if we're thinking more about um, whatever the needs are, we have to come up with educational solutions and educational support. And so it'd be issues like scaffolding and, dif and, and differentiation, um, very much multi-sensory approaches because we all learn in a variety of ways and we need support in a variety of ways, whatever our needs. Um, a key issue is assessment for, for learning and we, we'll talk a little bit about that later as well. Um, and th there's very good reasons for this because uh, unless uh, it's, it's, it's fine to actually do lots of wonderful, exciting things in the classroom that support everyone, but unless uh, our assessment pr procedures align with that, then we're not really going to get very far, but we can only touch on this later. And um, we'll talk a little bit about access and engagement, but fun fundamentally, this is all about understanding our learners and our, and, and our learners' needs. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, now, the, 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 the booklet goes into more detail in, in, in all of these things. Um, and all we can do today is just touch on some of these. Yeah, yeah. But of course, fundamentally, today, what it's about is, is the impact on, 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 on language learning. Next slide, please. OK, so let's let's kind of have a, a definition of inclusion, um, which 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 then comes back to some of the key issues from research. And we're talking here about global research, really. You know, the, OK, next, next next slide, please. OK, so that's the, the, this is a question for you, and I'll just give you a few a, a few seconds to think about it. When we talk about inclusion in schools, which children or young people are we talking about? I think I know your answer, but I'll just let's just wait three seconds and then we'll put up the next slide. Yeah. <laughs> Try to make this a little bit interactive. <laughs> okay, next um, next slide, please. Okay, and I'm sure this was kind of the answer you gave. It it is everyone, you know. And uh, as I say, the more we understand about uh, our learners' needs and. Uh, and looking at those special educational needs labels, um, the, the more informed we are and the better we're going to support. But, it's, but, but, but actually, um, a key message from this webinar and from all the work I do and I hope you do, is uh, inclusion is actually for everyone. You know? It's not for that particular, just for that little group over there. And inclusion doesn't mean, well, how do we just include them? It does mean that. But, uh, it, it is inclusion in its different ways and different facets is, is for everyone. And that's where our, our intersectionality also comes back again, whether it's gender issues, whether it's a uh, disability, whether it's any, you know, and race and, uh, you know, and all sorts of other issues. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. Um, just before we, we come to look at the positive approaches, um, you know, the research often talks about SPLDs and um, a lot of our research was, um, there's a lot of work done in, in kind of British Council sources and there's a huge amount of, of, um, of publications and, and resources from, from, from the British Council. But um, a lot of our research was also based on work by uh, Cambridge and Oxford Uni University Press. And this term SPLDs is often is often used, and I think that it's important to to consider specific learning difficulties um, because um, that that's a reality. Yeah, they, um, and and here is just a little slide looking at some of what the what the difficulties might be. Um, I I do I, I do feel that um, we have to kind of move on from a term like this and not over focus on on the difficulties recognize the difficulties, but I think we need to look at how we can support our learners from a different um, perspective, um, which, which, is, which is, I would say, a, a more positive um, perspective and, and, and looking for positive outcomes. But, but understanding um, these difficulties is part of that process, of course, of how we get to the positive. Yeah. I don't know if you just, maybe just a few seconds to, to, to read the whole, everything in this slide. Um, you can obviously see that there's a huge amount of issues here that relate to English language teaching and, and, and language teaching in general as well, and, and that really matters to understand this. Okay, next slide, please. All right. Um, I think one of the issues as well, and this and um, this this comes also from a British Council booklet that you can see the link to here. Um, which, which is looking at um, inclusion and, and how we can create an inclusive environment in, 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 in broad educational contexts. But, you know, the, the, there are two statements, really, that um, are, are thought about and discussed worldwide, that all children have an entitlement to education and that all children have the capacity to make progress or easy ones to make and to, and to secure agreement on. And, you know, all, all over the world, every government today or almost every government today has a has a very positive approach to to inclusion. Inclusion is very much you know where which is centerpiece in in all policy thinking in term in in term, in, in education. Yeah. Um, but if you know, however, if you look at the the bottom part of this, you know, if these these fundamental beliefs are common and the building blocks that 
create our educational landscapes, policy and infrastructure and educational culture, and the learning and teaching and learning practices. And I'll talk a bit, bit more about this later. Um, often means our aspirations are far ahead of what we're actually able to achieve. You know, they, um, and um, and this can be very challenging. You know, how do we how do we actually you know we're we're all for inclusion. You know, but how do we actually apply it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, if you look at this, this is a kind of visual look. Now, um, we're all for equality, of course, but you can see that the concept of equality, if you, it's it's about a quality of opportunity, really, and just equality. Just you know, but there, there's there's the, if we just do things in what might be a one size fits all approach we're certainly not going to reach all our learners you know that, and we can see in this in the left hand side of this slide that why that doesn't what why that doesn't work yeah uh, um equity is is certainly a much more inclusive approach and that means we're we're making uh, adjustments and in the british council we talked about reasonable adjustments um we're making adjustments that mean there is a much more uh uh, th th there's much more likelihood that um, that that we're going to access what we need to access. Um, if you go to next slide, we we have a third yes, and so this this throws up a third slide. Now, um, really, what inclusion is about is um, is not is not how do we engage with the barriers and make it more equitable. It's about how do we remove the barriers, you know. And, and, and removing this barriers allows everyone to, and this is where we have inclusion is for everyone, you know, everyone to access in their own way. Now, in a school context, um, what's, what this does, it's not just what we do as teachers, as teacher educators, or even as school systems. And um, of course we have to do all of that, but do that removal of that barrier allows the learners to make their own decisions and their own choices. And I think this is a key element of what of what inclusive practices is about. Um, sometimes we talk about the word agency. We might talk about teacher agency or learner agency. And this is where, um, you know, learners, to, to create the situations where learners have the possibility and the opportunity to make their own choices about how they want to learn. Um, and so removing the barriers is really very much where the, where the action is. Yeah. Okay, next slide, please. Oh, next slide again, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, I think a key issue is what I, what I talk about in the booklet. And uh, I think it's an important issue is what I call to send or not to send, you know, to, to special educational needs and disability or not, you know. And, um, and I think we need to see this as what I call a positive uh, dilemma in understanding inclusion and teaching and learning. Um, and, uh, you on the left hand side, we have what's called medical model thinking. Um, and, and, you know, I'm pretty sure everyone on this webinar, this is not how they're, they're thinking, but it is very much prevalent amongst many teachers, really. Um, and that they focus on SEND, looking at the deficit and looking at the problems. Um, and that's your or SBLDs, if you like, as well. Um, now, it, it's really, really important that schools can work together with with uh, with 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 other uh, uh, professionals who may be uh, you know involved in the psychosocial space, um, and um, and and they they are the experts really, and they and and having a diagnosis of dyslexia, of autism, of ADHD can be really, really helpful for everyone. It can be helpful for the individual. Can be helpful for parents. Can be helpful for teachers. And um, it, it can give uh, an understanding of why a learner may be acting, reacting, doing things in a way that, um, that, that, that just helps that understanding. So I'm in no way am I against that uh, diagnosis that, that that can be an essential element of understanding our learners. But it's not the role of teachers to diagnose learners. Um, if we can, if we get support, from 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 social psych psychological practitioners, then that's great. Our job, though, is to support with educational outcomes, really. Yeah, um, and so I think we need to sh shift. We need to shift our thinking, but in our work with teachers, we also need to shift our thinking, their thinking, away from being over focused on medical model thinking, 
to what we call social model thinking. And this really focuses on removal of those barriers, understanding that every learner is valued, you know, accepting our learners very much. They are who they are, really. Yeah, they, uh, and, and of course, what kind of resources can we use and how can we support them in, 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 in different ways? This very much is a, a, for us in our discussion today, is a, is a school-based issue. But actually, it's an issue for the whole of the society. Um, and uh, it, it really gets to, I would say, understanding social model thinking gets to the heart of uh, what we mean by, by inclusion in practice. And of course, the uh, diversity of, 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 of our learners and our schools. Um, just one other point to make here is um, I'm, I'm definitely not saying that medical um, interventions are not necessary. There could be lots and lots of very, very supportive the medical interventions, um, you know, um, um, and, um, and, and that if that helps, then, then, then that's great. Um, but the essence of what we need to do as teacher educators is, is, to, is, is to focus on the educational outcomes. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and this just gives a bit more graphic um, 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 detail of what I've just been saying. You know, diagnosis can be useful, but that's for our, our clinical professionals to make, not teachers. Um, if you want a little mantra of what this, this webinar is actually about, it's, it's really start from what our learners can do, not from what they can't do. And that doesn't mean there aren't can't do issues that we have to address, but it's pretty obvious, you know, with all, all learning, it, you know, um, it, it, not just thinking about inclusion, but all teacher development, the more we're involved in the positive, the more there's going to be self, self esteem will be, will be, will be promoted. And that can only help, 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 help learning. Yeah. yeah. Um, as I said, an over focus of diagnosis identifies individuals as a problem to be fixed. In many ways, and that's no, the, it's not the fault of teachers. It's not really the fault of, te of schools. It's kind of just the way things are. Um, but it, it's it's the system that needs fixing, and and the way we can in, in, introduce inclusive practices into that is is, is what what matters. You know, the, yeah. Okay. Next slide, please. Okay. Um, very much for this for this for this webinar. We're focused on language and uh, communication. Is so much is so much part of that, but this is just a little slide to see what 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 does learning involve? You know, they, you know, and and involves all these things. I mean, obviously, it involves knowing knowing our various subjects, whether it's language or whether it's science or mathematics or geography or history or whatever it is. Um, and you know, obviously, schools are there to 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 teach subjects, but actually, schools are there for much more. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's really about making and being friends. You know, it's reasoning and learning. It, you know, it's understanding the world and sharing ideas and feelings. And fundamentally, and this is where maybe approaches to social and emotional learning are so important. Um, it's about a, self, a sense of self and belonging. And if we, if we have schools as a kind of safe space where this kind of sense of self and belonging is there that that learners understand that that teachers care, and I know everyone here would have that approach. Um, that 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 is so that is so important. And you know, I, learning is a complex process. You know, not not just inclusive learning, but all all learning. Um, and yes, teachers need to know this subject, and 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 students and learners will know whether a teacher does or not. Yeah. You know, but actually what makes learning happen is relationships. And it's the relationship between us and, 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 and those we're, we're working with that really is the, is the important glue that makes, makes learning happen. And that I would say is an essential element of what we mean by inclusion as well. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, now this is just a, a little, another little graphic look and it's focusing on uh, dyslexia. and. Um, dyslexia, like like many of our special educational needs, which may you know it may go across autism, it may go across ADHD as well. It's got very little to do with intelligence, and 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 in fact, quite the opposite. Often, learners who who are uh, 
uh, dyslexic, um, who may be on the autism spectrum, and others, they're, they're highly intelligent. But th there is a gap between that, that, that actual ability and what actually happens in schools. And, uh, you know, we can see on the left-hand side, which are, which are, which are a number of the, of, 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 the, of the challenges and difficulties which may come uh, associated with uh, dyslexia. A lot of these are, are, are with other labels too. You know, the, um, um, and, and working memory is, 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 a huge, is a huge element of that. How much information can somebody hold at a time? Yeah, the, yeah. Um, and, and these are a lot of the difficulties. But if we look at the left-hand side, the, 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 the right-hand side, many of our learners who are uh, dyslexic have, have fantastic strengths and uh, they can, you know, understanding systems. They they have a more three three dimensional look at the world and the way they perceive the world. Um, holistic thinking, um, often uh, creative. Um, you know, they if they have issues with working memory, they may have a strong visual memory. Now, this is not to say that you know somebody who's uh, dyslexic is a super learner. Far from it. And, many, and you know yourself that many learners with uh, dyslexia underachieve. But I think the issue is how can we focus on these strengths to, to bring out the best of their potential? Um, and, and in turn, a lot of these strengths are really important for everyone, which again takes us back to inclusion is for everyone. So it's, it's thinking, under, it's recognizing the weaknesses, but understanding the strengths-based approach is, is our way through really. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, and and again, this is just to this is just to to reemphasize this positive approach, really. And and a lot of uh, what teachers can do is what is what I call what can teachers notice. Yeah, you know? what's working or not, and of course, understanding this is is good evidence. It's good evidence informed about what's happening in, in class. Now, um, evidence can come from research and from looking what reading books and joining webinars and looking what other people do. But uh, real practical evidence is what goes on in your classrooms or what goes on in the classrooms of the teachers that you work with. You know, and as I say, trying to get rid of that little little T at the end of can't you know, the, you know, the, and turning it into can. You know. And you might like to ask some of those questions like uh, to even for yourself or, or with other teachers, you know, they, you know um, is a learner responding or not in different subjects in different ways and why is that? You know, they, but um, what's the learner doing well? You know, how is she or he doing it? Does she have particular preferences in the way, in the way to work? Now we're not, we're definitely not talking here about learning styles, which um, is another, is another topic, but uh, 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 um, it's not it's not that I want to go into, but we do have learning preferences, and of course those preferences can change at different times. You know, you know. What skills, activities, or processes seem to be working? Um, and I think the key issue is, well, if it's working, can we do more of that? If it's not, then we need to do something else. There, there's a phrase in neuro linguistic programming, um, which is which I like to use a lot which is if you always do what you've always done, you always get what you've always got. Now, if what you're doing is working, then great, keep on doing it. If not, we need to try something else. Um, just at the bottom here, you know, we need to do different things with different learners and you know, we need a balance of what works. But you know, some, some, some learners really do, whatever their, their so-called special needs are, might, might like to, uh, to kind of explore and, and find out through learning. Others need explicit teaching and learning, um, and, and um, you know something that's called whole to part or part to whole. Do and you know, a, a, a dyslexic learner may very well need the big picture first, the whole to part, uh, and then go into the detail. Well, well, others may need starting from the detail, then go to the bigger picture. Um, but if we do all of this, then we're going to reach all our learners, and that and that's really the point. I mean, Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, now I'm, I'm going, we're going to stop in, in, in a moment to, to, to do the uh, question and answer, um, but just before we do so, and, and something that will take us into the, the, um, the, the, the final section, is really this, 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 
there's three elements basically to inclusion. You know, one one is policy, which which is generally a top down one because it comes from governments, it comes from educational ministries, and it goes down to regional authorities and then to schools. You know, um, and we need to have good policy because if we don't have good policy, we we can do lots of things in the classroom, but that 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 really matters. Yeah. You know? um, the, the 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 second one is what we what can be called school culture, and that is how what what is going on in the school in term in terms of uh, understanding and trying to in, implement inclusive practices across the school, and then it comes to practice what actually happens in the classroom. These three areas have to be aligned in order for inclusion to happen, yeah, um, and to, and for pe pedagogical change to to to, to happen. In terms of applying inclusion practices, but but we'll come a bit more to that in the in the last session. So um, there's quite a lot in that. Um, it's a it's a bit of a race through, um, but I'd like to stop there and let's let's see what uh, what comes up in the question and answers. Hope hope we can answer some of your questions. <laughs> Hi Phil, thank you very much for your input and insight on this very important topic. Now, uh, colleagues, we are opening the Q and A. Please share your questions in the. Q and A, and we have already some uh, received some very good questions. And from these questions, we want to start with Kashmir's question: um, Are learning disabilities lifelong? Um, I mean, yes, is the is the simple answer. Um, but it doesn't need. But it, then it doesn't mean, given the things I've said, it needs to be a problem. <laughs> but uh, but uh, okay. it, yes, I mean, I think, and and it, it, it's basically how we manage. Yeah. Yeah, actually, you mentioned also during the webinar that we need to shift our thinking, right, about these special educational needs. So, um, in terms yeah, if, of... If, if I can just add something that, and you know, a lot of people, and I understand it, talk about learning uh, disabilities. And um, it's, I just find it, it's just far too broad a a kind of statement to make you know and that's why we've got to go down to, to to the to the kind of specifics well what are those difficulties rather than just as broadly that person has a learning um, disability mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes so uh referring back to the um social medical model and all the other important uh information that you have shared with us um fernando has a question um what are some factors which hinder inclusive education practices for learners with special educational needs and disabilities? Whew, that's a, that, that's a big one, and I, and I think it comes back to what I was showing on the last slide about how you how you apply the school culture and then the practice in the classroom. Yeah, um, but I, I would say it, it's that medical model thinking that is the uh, that that is the the barrier. And trying to see your learners as having, uh, you know, as uh, deficits really, yeah, the, yeah, and and um, it, it's that shift in thinking that is so important in in, in kind of overcoming that. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. Yes, I that reminded me of an article. It was uh, also the thinking um, we disable uh, people so actually yeah. with yeah. the barriers that we yeah. uh, put in front of them. Yeah. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Phil. Uh, so we, that also means we, as teacher educators, need to be confident and um, sure. Sure. aware of the issues. So and and, and the, this grows in time as well with doing it. And the more we do it, the more more we can become comfortable with it. And th this isn't this isn't a simple step. You know, the, you know, and we we know many of our you know many of our learners in the classroom. You know, they don't. You know, they may have a real challenge in in, in interacting in a in, in a large classroom as well. Um, and um, it, it can seem, uh, you know, that how do we teach the rest of the class? Well, there's all sorts of other, other, other things going on, but um, we need to work at it as, as teachers individually and also as, as with other teachers and, 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 and find solutions. And um, I think you need to see inclusion also not as a, an, end, an end place. You know, there's no door that says this is now inclusion. It's always ongoing <laughs> and we're always learning <laughs> and we're doing the best we can. <laughs> and as you mentioned, we are having this, uh, this, this can be useful for everyone, for all students. So not just- And, and that apply, and that's very much, we'll come to it in a minute when we're looking at the, 
the uh, 10 approaches, but um, multi-sensory approaches means we're doing things in different ways that, that, that can support all learners. Mm -hmm. You also mentioned the concept of neurodiversity in your um, um, how to guide. So maybe we can talk about this in the next yeah, So let's let's move on. We want to hear you. So we want to hear more from you. Thank okay. you so much, Phil. Okay, it'd be good at some point to know what the what the other questions were. But uh... <laughs> very good questions, actually. To I'm me. sure there are. I've no doubt. You know I mean? So. Um, in this more it, it's i go into this in much more detail in the guide and we really don't really have the time to go into all of this but i'd like to introduce uh, an approach that um, i call the top 10 approaches to quality learning and inclusion and this really is how do we focus on the practical application yeah okay now if we if we look at this i've divided this, this is sometimes called a wheel other people call it a pie or a pizza um, and uh, I um, call it what you want, but um, the point is they're, they're little slices that make up um, what I call quality learning. Um, now, because it, it's in slices, you, know, you could start anywhere. There's no particular place to start, um, but um, that will depend on your context. Now, um, and just something else to say here is, um, <coughs> You know, the, the, this 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 booklet is is supporting research into into inclusion and, and inclusive practices and how we can support our, our learners with SEN and all our learners. Um, and as I think I've said before, global understanding and learning from global practice really matters. But actually, applying inclusion is always going to be local and really must be based on your on your context and your and your needs. Um, but but. If we just just go around this this little pie, so you know we could have different di different areas. You know, um, celebrate diversity, which could involve celebrating celebrating the, the difference in our classrooms, and seeing that as positive, and and the, and and the, and the different and the different positive things that that learners bring to to the classroom. Um, you know, may have we may want to focus on on actually um, some measurable learning outcomes. Um, and and that, that, that might be also how we might negotiate some of that with, with our learners. Yeah. Um, a, key, a key issue in all learning, I would say, is start, start from and link to what learners already know. You know? And in that way, we can, build, we can build learners' knowledge, understanding learning. Yeah. Um, there's a lot there's often a lot of kind of clutter and in, in, there's clutter everywhere and if you can think of a, a room in your house that you might think there's a lot of clutter things all over the place my my office and desk is all is often very cluttered but there can be clutter in learning and um you know how, how can we get through a barrier and this might be for example an overload of information it might be too much teacher talk you know it was just clutters the mind. It might be giving an instruction and then uh, giving more instructions. Um, and uh, it, so it, it, how do you remove some of that, that stuff, you know, that, that might be a barrier to, to learning? Um, a key issue would be scaffolding and teaching learning. Now scaffolding would be a, a kind of structured support for other learners, which might be certain amounts of language you would give. It might be um, some questions you would give to support. Um, um, and linked to that, what I call the sister of scaffolding, is uh, a differentiation. And that is, we could be working to the same outcomes, but doing it in, in, in different ways. And, um, and that might be, I'll just jump a little bit, might be multi-sensory ways. You know, so it might be that some learners would like to focus on text, while others would, and, and pure text, well, others might want to do something in a more visual way or a more auditory way. Um, we might be working to the same outcome, but you do it in slightly different ways. Yeah. Um, plan and cater for accessibility. And this might be about mobility needs or it might be sensory needs, but um, it might be how can we ensure that the information that is given is, 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 is one that's accessible. Yeah. Um, a key one is ensure appropriate space for the learner's voice and this comes back to what I talked about about learner's agency 
Um, and and the last one is assessment for learning, which which we'll, we'll talk about in a few minutes. Yeah. Um, now, if you do all of that all the time, um, it may not work. <laughs> and uh, you that may you know like eating eating a large pizza very quickly you may get indigestion um, and and that's not very helpful and um, what these 10 approaches are really aimed at doing is pick a slice pick two slices um, have a go see if it comes back to um, what's working what's not working if you if you you might think um, some slides are more some of these slices are more appropriate in your context have a go and then build up. And then maybe over, a, over time, over a term, over a year, you might like to include different elements of these and, and, and see what's working. It's seen, it's not, a, it's not a, 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 um, a silver bullet in terms of introducing inclusive practices, but it is a framework for thinking about what inclusion in learning can involve. If you prefer different, different headings for each of these, then that, that's no problem. But, uh, that this is a framework for us to apply inclusive practices. And we'll just look at a couple of examples. Next slide, please. Okay, now, um, just thinking about clear and achievable and measurable out outcomes, but also a lot of these slices interlink as well. They're, they're, they can be standalone, but they could link with other slices. And, I, and this one, I've put the measurable outcomes and starting from and linking what, what, what is already known. There may be others, but this is a model often used in the UK and, 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 and perhaps globally um, to, in planning lessons. Yeah, they, yeah, they. Um, and, and it's called assess, plan, do, review. And it is basically what it, what it says. So the first stage would be assess. And it's, it's not assess their special needs, but it's assess their learning needs. Um, once you've done that, let's plan what we're going to do now, and then we do it. Um, now, every plan is like any recipe. It's very important and very useful to work from, but we also want to adapt and change as, as needed. So after teaching, we review what worked, what didn't work, what could we do differently next time? How could we include everyone in, in, in a different way? How can we ensure that learning has a chance of happening? Um, and as you see, this is a this is cyclical, so it goes round and round and round. Then we go back to assess again and go on. And I think again that that fits very very much with the with the actual model of um, of of the ten approaches. And you could do this with any of the slices, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next slice, please. Okay, um, I just want to talk through. A, a little bit about what's involved here. Um, th this is a little little technique that um, which you can use on a blackboard or a whiteboard. It could be done digitally as well, and if you've got the skills for that. But um, what what I often do is in, in the classroom, it, and this brings in scaffolding, multisensory, differentiated teaching, and learning. I, I I might start by doing this. I might draw on the board this little bit on the bottom left hand. Um, now. Um, it could be a house or it could be something else, but let's let's assume it's a house and then maybe there's a little pathway or there's a little river here. And I draw that. And then I ask, le I ask learners to come up and, um, and then add to, to this drawing. And so this is a little example of what on, on one occasion learners have drawn. Um, this, this, then, this then becomes um, an, um, a text. It's a, it's a visual text. Um, but um, you know, there's a lot of things going going on here. If we were doing this in a session, we'd spend a lot longer on this. But um, what's interesting about this is it, it moves from what the, the 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 teacher started, which might be some scaffolding to do a little drawing. Um, it then becomes the learner's text, and we could do all sorts of things with this. We can work on vocabulary. We could work on on uh, on, on on prepositions. Um, we could work on grammar. Um, if you ask the question, when did this happen? Last week, today, it's going to happen next week, then we can work on all tenses. So it means we can work with different levels. 
Um, of course, we could turn it into a story. It could be dialogues as well. And you don't necessarily have to have just have, have people, of course, but dialogues. So you could have a dialogue between the tree and uh, and the the boat for some, for some reason. Yeah, they, you can have all, 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 all sorts of things. Um, now, now I, I would argue this this is is an inclusive activity on many levels. Um, my experience, you need to take my word for it, that um, and I, um, I've never had a situation where learners haven't enjoyed doing this. And if learners are enjoying doing what they're doing, then um, there's a fighting chance that learning might might happen. Um, it, it allows for learners who may be able to work at the more the more abstract text based and storytelling or something like that level to engage at that level. Um, it, it allows other learners to maybe engage at a more visual learner. Um, you know, you might be you might you might be doing something with 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 with, with audio through this. So it becomes multi sensory. So. It's finding a practical approach that, that, that can make sense to all learners and allow them to be included. But what we're still doing is, is working towards a, um, a can, um, an, an outcome that we want from that lesson or over, or over a number of lessons. So that, that's just one, one activity that we might bring into to these 10 top approaches. Next slide, please. Okay, um, Sharon. Um, raised the issue of neural uh, diversity, and I don't know how much you know about it, but uh, you know th there's. It's often said that a majority of learners are are neuro typical, and other learners are might be uh, um, who are dyslexic or the the, the 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 concept of neurodiversity largely came out of what I'd call the autism movement, and um, it was a, a way of understanding how 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 individuals with, with autism. It's really, and it applies to dyslexia as well, and it applies to other, other special needs. Um, their, their brain functions in a, in, in a different way to, to the majority of people. Um, I mean, I, I would actually say we're, we're all neurodiverse to some extent, um, but um, it, it is a way of understanding learners who may think in a, in a different way. And, and that's why we like to use the term rather than learning difficulties, often learning difference. And I think this is also another part of the, the positive. Yeah? But just as, I, as it's written here, traditional classroom approaches may not connect with neurodiverse learners because, because it's so focused on text-based or mathematical approaches. Um, in understanding neurodiversity, we recognize that cognitive differences are part of a natural spectrum of ways of thinking that are unique. And, and that's something we need to socially and, 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 and celebrate. Um, I, I did some work some years ago with, with somebody who was autistic in, 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 in the workplace. And she said to me, um, my, first, my first language is visual. My second language is text. And uh, I think kind of un understanding that. Now, that's not to say do one or the other, but again, it's how do we integrate? you know, different approaches in different ways so we, we can reach the outcomes we need for, for everyone. Right? Okay, next slide, please. Yeah. Okay, um, assessment for learning is a huge issue and it's a huge slide all of this in, in itself, in my, a huge slice all of itself in the, in the 10 approaches. Um, but, and um, in the booklet, we've got some tasks um, and, um, and we've got some tasks around assessment for learning. And this is just a, a couple of ideas, um, and you might like to look, look more in the booklet to, to, to go into more detail. Um, but firstly, it's about understanding what's the difference between assessment of learning to assessment for learning. Um, and assessment of learning is, as it says, you know, what's been taught, what's been studied, let's test it. Yeah. <laughs> um, assessment for learning is a, is a much more, and now it's not necessarily always used in terms of inclusive practices, but it's very much a, a essential aspect of inclusive practices. And often it's a more working together approach, collaborative approach. Um, and as much, um, as much about learners themselves and identifying what their, what their needs are as well. Um, and how they can actually monitor their own goals against what might be the, the outcomes. You know, the, um, assessment for learning fundamentally um, focuses on, on progress 
rather than the end, the you know, the end of week, end of term, end of year test. Although that absolutely can add contribute to to, to, to that. So um, again, we don't need to necessarily see assessment of learning and assessment for learning as polar opposites, but there is a different a different focus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay, um, again, this, this is just ways of thinking about assessment for learning. And these are some questions that if you're working with teachers, working with a learner, you might want to put, what am I learning today? Why am I learning this? How will I know that I've learned it? You know, what is it that tells me? Um, and that could be used in doing any, any activity, yeah. Um, Another factor as well, and this is often not put into assessment, is what about the non-academic factors? You know, the, and um, are there some ways that we can give credit for uh, for the the non the non-subject and non non-academic stuff? And here's just a few a few issues. You know, um, resilience, determination, um, self-awareness. Um, you know, the um, um, the persistence in learning, creativity. Um, is the learner being resourceful? Um, you know, can we do something, you know, could give credit for, for motivation um, and critical thinking? Um, I, I'm sure you can think of others. And again, this was a little task in the booklet you might like to think of. And um, that could be so positive as well. Yeah, the, yeah. And, you know, if we're, if we're actually giving credit for some of the non-academic, which might support, then support the, the, the non-academic, yeah. And, and again, um, you know, scaffold, you know, assessment for learning could link again with differentiation and scaffolding and some of these other of the other slices. Um, are there ways that we can encourage self-assessment as well? Yeah. Um, how do we learn from from each other? Um, so focusing on assessment for learning is so crucial, I think, because assessment is so crucial to what goes on in schools anyway. Um, you know, how, how do we shift really, I suppose, is what I'm saying from purely assessment of learning to, to assessment for learning. And that, that in itself will lead to more inclusive thinking, but inclusive practices. Okay, next slide. Okay, here's the, the, another idea, which, which is in the booklet that you might like to think about, which, which would encourage kind of self-peer and cooperative assessment tasks. Um, and this is done in schools. I, I've seen this done in a uh, special school in a lesson, and it's really, really interesting. Um, and um, it's it's when you when you've when when the lesson has been or, or through a lesson, and what, what, and when a lesson has been done, really, um, you might like to identify different different areas of the lesson, which might be knowledge, the subject, the content. It might be participation, um, behavior. And of course, if you're asking learners about their behavior, this is, begins to introduce uh, a, a, an important element of their own self-judgment of their, of their behavior and, and things what they perceive what they've learned. So they could give, I mean, this is just an example, give a mark out of 10, and these are six, four, seven, eight. And then the teacher gives a mark. Um, I think what you find if you do this, um, there's often not a great difference between the, the, the student's mark and the teacher's mark. Um, if, if there is a difference, then that's an issue for, you know, to, 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 to talk about. Um, I think the power of this is not so much the marks. I mean, the marks are just numbers in the end. Um, I think that the powerfulness of this is that, that you're introducing this learner responsibility in thinking about their involvement in the lesson. Um, and I think that that is, that is more important than the actual the actual numbers, you know, the, um, and um, you know the feeling of ownership of the lesson as well. This is not. This is not. You know, we don't we don't teach lessons. We teach people, and um, and that again is you know is is that is is what inclusion is all about. You know, um, if you haven't done something like this, it might be something worth trying to see how it goes. Um, some sometimes you have to. Well, of course, you have to do it more than once, and then you know, if learners know that this is something you're going to do, not not every lesson. But uh, but 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 in a, in a kind of framework, um, um, you know, over a term, it's it's something really useful to do and can really be very positive. 
Okay, we're coming towards the end now, I think. Phil, yeah. just just before for the previous slide, when you talked about learners, we have some questions, really good questions related yeah. to the previous yeah. slide. For example, Russia uh, asked how to encourage other learners in the class to be more socially open to differences. Yeah. So he said, he, uh, I know it has to do with the school or individual's culture, but how to help them to appreciate differences without causing any emotional harm to learners, yeah. especially yeah. learning. Yeah, I mean, I mean, one 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 approach is if you if you can fit into the school subject to actually talk about it as well. You know, if you can talk about autism and you know, and uh, let's say there's a learner on the autism spectrum, and that and that learner he or she talks about you know both her, her strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, it you know it, it can it can begin to create a greater understanding. Um, you know, having having. Uh, Having support people in the class, buddies, sometimes called as well, can be really, really helpful. Um, 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 having having a lesson where you might you might you know you know an, an English language lesson with text or what or whatever or a story or maybe watching a video about uh, dyslexia, you know, can really promote that understanding. But at the same time, could be a really good language lesson as well. You know, you know, and, mm -hmm. and understanding the difference. So. Um, all these, all these sort of ways, and many, many more, you know, would, yeah. would actually would actually help to encourage that. Yeah. Yes, but small changes make uh, Ab absolutely. And as I say, there's no there's no fast end route to what we call inclusion. It's uh, and and it's a small yes, it's the small changes that become very much the big changes. Yeah. And it needs to be, as far as I understand, embedded into the curriculum. So in yeah. all areas of and, the and uh, and that's absolutely the case. It's not a separate area. It mm -hmm. goes, it should go across the, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and there's another question from Ekaterina uh, regarding students and the parents. This time, how to talk to parents who don't know that their kid has some problems or they don't want to mention it, but their kid has and those results that parents are waiting from the educational process are different. How to explain that to parents? Yeah, that's, uh, that's, such, a, that's such a big one. Um, I mean, it's um, it, it's such a big one on on many different levels. But if if somebody has a medical uh, diagnosis, do the parents want to accept that <laughs> as well? Um, um, if if not, you know, the, uh, you know, what, what do you do? I mean, I, I think what's important is uh, can we do things in in the school that can also be supported at home as well? Yeah. yeah. And so, can can you actually do 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 tests that are that, that are actually followed up? Um, another important thing is, I mean, I mean, the last slide is talking about whole school approaches. Um, mm -hmm. That that whole school approach should should really involve parents. You know, they, you know, um, you know, they, they, there is something that's often used in uh, in supporting special educational needs called a um, a, um, a, a kind of edu educational learning plan. Which might which might identify particular you know needs that, that need to be worked on, whether it's behaviour or whether it's it's you know unable to you know some some way that somebody isn't ac accessing the lesson and, and learning, and so um, I think parents need to be involved in in, in, in this as well. And in, in the UK, we have a concept called um, the educational healthcare plan, and. Um, and that that involves uh, medical professionals, but and then it involves the teaching, but it involves parents as well to some extent, and and involves the, the individuals as well in having a say in all of this, which is all part of the agency. And uh, um, now that's the ideal situation, and not saying that's always easy. And in different countries and different cultures, that's going to be more complex. But all all I could really say is that. The, the need for that broad involvement of everyone, including parents, is going to be where we find the answers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that also answers one of the questions from uh, our participants. How can teachers or teacher educators diagnose? What can teachers do? So we need to um, yeah. have this whole school. Yeah, um, and, and uh, I mean, just to say again, it's very important that teachers don't don't diagnose and use that word <laughs> unless they are unless they are uh, and specialists themselves, which, which in some cases it is. Um, but, but, but what teachers can do is, you know, what in one of my slides back is what can we notice? 
and mm. uh, and then what what support can we give yeah yeah from an educational mm. perspective mm -hmm. yeah. thank you so much phil let's listen to the last two slides well, and we have some more questions yeah well it's really just one slide i think the next one the last one is just a thank you but uh, the, but th this is just to give a little picture of really what is what is inclusion and what and and a, and, a, and um, a whole school approach, and again we go to any of those clouds we want, but uh, um, you know it's more than just the policy; it's the responsibility of us all, yeah, and not an add and not an add on. It needs to come through our approach to inclusion needs to come through everything we're doing. Um, yes, knowing and understanding our learners' needs and strengths, um, and through that basically valuing everyone's contribution yeah, yeah. um it is about the needs of the school and uh community um diversity itself equality and diversity you know is about is about valuing everyone and a key element in the center here moving on from cl from clinical diagnosis to to approaches for educational solutions yeah um, and and changing it's about changing some of the ways things are organized as well as the way we teach you know, um reflecting on our practice and that's the 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 plan the plan do you know review etc um and that working together in collaborative practices is where is where we're is where we're going to find the answers you know, um all our learners have some kind of meaning and they're all meaning makers and let's support support them in that now just the two things to end with as i said there's lots of wonderful global practice that we can we can follow um and 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 looking at the evidence of what makes inclusive practices across the world in different contexts really matters but solutions are local and what you do in your context is what is where the answers will come from um in a wider issue i mean this this webinar is about inclusive inclusion inclusive practices but this is really i would say this 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 is all all about teacher de development and good inclusion is good teacher development and understanding that is what matters so i think i think it's just a thank you in the next slides and yes it is so thanks Thank you for your time, and um, that's, uh, I, I see we've kind of overrun. But uh, <laughs> Phil, maybe you can share us your final suggestions for teacher educators. This was also one of the questions. Do you have some suggestions that teacher educators may pass on to their teachers that they work with, and are there any in the how to guide? Because um, the how to guide is also a very comprehensive guide. Can you tell us about the how to guide? Um, well, as I say, the, 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 a, a really important part of the how-to guide. Well, I mean, the first part of it is the research and the and the and the definitions and and all the rest of it. And um, it's it's the second part, which is the practical application around the 10, 10 approaches. And so there's more detail in that on 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 how you might work with the, the, these these different slices in order to have a a good balanced comprehensive meal rather than indigestion <laughs> um but you know there the, the really isn't an answer the, the, the only answer really is is we need to do it you know we we need you need to work together you need yes as, as a team you can't really do inclusion in one classroom you know as, as a teacher you can do lots of wonderful things and and you do and will um but in order to really apply apply inclusion it's really it's it's working on this aspect of a uh, culture, really, that the school. And when I say culture, I mean the school culture. I'm not talking about the culture of the country or the society, although that can be part of it. Um, so it's um, you have to keep you have to want to do it, and you have to keep on doing it. Um, now that might seem awesome, but actually, once you do it, it's not that it's not that um, difficult, really. You know, but it's building on what you're doing, and it's reflecting on what you're doing. And you can see from that, that is just good teacher education, good practice, isn't it, really? <laughs> and, um, and, that, and essentially, that's what inclusion is. And so it's have a go, good luck, enjoy it, and, uh, you know, and, and share. <laughs> yes, it's not something separate from what we are actually, what we should be doing in the classroom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much, Phil. Um, this um, has been extremely useful and 
uh, we have we, we learned um, lots of practical tips and uh, there are a lot more in the how to guides and um, uh, you have some other articles also on on teaching English websites so yeah. our teachers might uh, find them teach uh, our participants can find them useful as well I hope so, so yes and um, thank you so much everyone uh, for uh, your questions so I think we have received really good questions we couldn't answer some of them we'll um, answer them in a different way in the future so maybe in our newsletter or maybe we can have another um, Q&A with you Phil in the future so sure. Sure. we'll definitely answer some of these uh, all of these questions in another way and um, Please remember to download the how to guide, uh, which is a very comprehensive one, and it provides support for a better understanding of the approaches. So it's, I found it like a capsule that includes everything. Um, and uh, also uh, the recording of the webinar and the slides will be available on teaching English in the next couple of days. And the link to the certificate will be provided in the thank you email that you will receive tomorrow. Please share your feedback with us. You'll see the feedback form in the chat. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our monthly newsletter for teacher educators. Finally, um, register. You can register for our next webinar, which is about exploratory action research for teacher educators on 7th of February. So thank you very much, uh, Phil, once again. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Be yeah. very much. And thank you to everyone. Yeah.